Thanks for joining this share. It is hoped that you will participate with a comment. Hit the like and share icon. All this is appreciated. Today I share on the topic, feeding your tilapia food fish feces from farmed animals. Whilst this idea is seen as disgusting, this is a practice done by food fish farmers in China. The most disturbing account comes from a tilapia farm in China's Guangdong province. At this facility, from which exporters purchase fish to sell to the United States, farmers feed fish a partial diet of feces from hundreds of pigs and geese. Based on this fact-finding shared information, I would hesitate purchasing any food from China. The practice of feeding farmed fish feces from farmed animals fosters the risk of humans whom have consumed fish from these farms being affected by microbes like salmonella. This warning was also shared by Michael Doyle, director of the University of Georgia Center for Food Safety. As gleaned from a document published in 2013, the Chinese producers of fish products have exported several containers of farmed fish, namely tilapia, to the United States. After inspection according to documents, several shipments have been rejected by the FDA. Instances of tilapia shipments rejections have occurred since 2007. Tilapia food fish is usually fed vegan-based food. These in algae and aquatic plants when in the wild. On fish farms throughout the world, some farmers use feed made from corn or soybean meal. In Asia, including China provinces, when no other feed is provided, they will eat poop. There have been instances where fish farms in Asia were found to be feeding poultry. Sheep or hog manure to tilapia. For those using science as a means of their support of feeding farmed fish, farmed animal waste argue along the following lines. They argue that animal and crop production throughout the world generate high amounts of wastes or byproducts annually that may possess added value compounds with high functionality. They infer that disposing the waste from farmed animals is a waste of potential valued resources. These wastes and byproducts may cause negative environmental impacts and significant expenses if not well managed and or controlled. Much of these wastes and byproducts is valuable and cheaper source of potentially functional compounds such as proteins, lipids, starch, micronutrients, bioactive compounds, and dietary fibers. In aquaculture, feed is expensive, and the existing body of literature has shown that animal manure and its extracts can be successfully incorporated into fish pond to increase fish production at a low cost. In addition, Crop residues such as rice bran, maize bran, and seed cakes are commonly used as pond inputs in small-scale aquaculture. Animal waste and crop residues are added in a fish pond that filter-feeding fish can use directly as feed. Sounds interesting, right? To me personally, this is so nasty. These, meaning farmed animal waste, may form a major proportion of the detritus in the pond. These resources also stimulate the growth of phytoplankton that are rich in protein and are the basis of the food web that can support the growth of a range of herbivorous and omnivorous fish. Therefore, technically, wastes are used as direct feed, a source of minerals for autotrophic production and a source of organic matter for heterotrophic production. In this context, animal manure and crop residues have been used to provide great opportunities to improve food security. The purpose of this review is to project the potential of animal waste and agro byproducts as a sustainable alternative as aquaculture inputs to reduce poverty, malnutrition, and hunger in developing countries. Pond fertilization with animal manure stimulates production of bacteria, phytoplankton, zooplankton, and benthic organisms. The use of animal waste has been studied under integration systems in Africa and extensively in Asian countries. Benefits of integrated agroaquaculture systems have been reported in resource-poor areas, particularly in developing countries. Pond fertilization with animal manure stimulates production of bacteria, phytoplankton, zooplankton, and benthic organisms. The use of animal waste, livestock, has been studied under integration systems in Africa and extensively in Asian countries. Benefits of integrated agroaquaculture systems have been reported in resource-poor areas particularly in developing countries. To me personally this thrust is considered unethical and dangerous for humans' health. 
Interestingly, the practice of using animals from farms is not unique to China only. In Tanzania, more than 80% of fish farmers relied on locally available feed ingredients as a major feed supplement for their cultured fish. These local feed ingredients are categorized into four groups, 1. Animal byproducts, 2. Agricultural byproducts, 3. Plant leaves and weed, and 4. Industrial byproducts. It has been reported that the early growth phase of tilapia between the years 1991 through to the year 2000, was significantly contributed by the use of alternative sources of protein including fishery byproducts, terrestrial animal byproducts, and a wide range of plant byproducts. According to the circular economy approach, the idea of reduce, reuse and recycle of resources, waste from animal and food can be valorized leading to the production of proteins and other valuable compounds. For example, chicken, pig and cattle manures are substrates for production of housefly, musca domestica, maggots which are in turn used as fish feed, or as supplement to fish meal and fish feed formulation. Maggots are readily available and are accredited for having high nutritional value with an amino acid profile with biological value exceeding that of soybean and groundnut. Maggots can be harvested, processed into a meal that can be used to substitute or replace fish meal. This is point that rocked me during the research for this share. Animal wastes utilization can be used to produce insects which can be utilized as fish feed hence, reduce feed costs significantly, thus leading to a viable and sustainable aquaculture industry. The replacement of 25% fish meal and catfish feed, culture with maggot gave high growth performance and profitability than fish meal based diet. To hell with that. I consider this as nasty. In ending, it is clear that fish consumption in sub-Saharan Africa is increasing. In order to maintain the present amount of fish consumption, considerable additional quantities of fish are required through aquaculture. In turn, aquaculture requires feed as a major input for increasing production. Since commercial fish feed production in most of the sub-Saharan countries is limited, considerable investments are required in local and low-cost feed manufacturing. Raw materials of plant and animal origin are sufficiently available in the region albeit the possible competition from livestock and human consumption. Therefore, valorization of animal and agricultural products in the sub-Saharan countries is imperative slash inevitable for increasing fish production at low cost. Let me know what you think about the information shared in this presentation. Bye!